What's up everyone, this is Connor back with another video for guns and stuff. And today I have brought my Moss 4956 out to the range today. This is a gun that's actually pretty common in the USA, but I don't think a lot of people really realize it because it's French and a lot of French guns have this kind of weird stigma about them in the USA, which I don't really understand. They're very cool guns. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a range day with this. We're gonna shoot out at the 300 yard range, try to get some shots, talk a little bit about it and kind of show it off. because It's a very cool, unique rifle. So um, enough talking, let's get right into the video. All right, so I'm here at the 300 meter range with the Moss 4956. I have two targets down range, a full size guy on your right, and then a 12 by 18 silhouette on your left. I have 20 rounds. Hopefully I'll get hits. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try the smaller one. That's a hit. I think that's a hit. The length of pull on this is definitely short. I have to put my thumb around this way so I'm not hitting myself. I think I'm getting hits on that little one. All right, so out here at the range today with the French Moss 4956, which you see here with a few other things we will get to. This is a French semi-automatic rifle. The 4956 is pretty much an evolution, a final evolution of a rifle that France has been working on since like the late 20s, I believe. If you want any more in-depth information, check out Forgotten Weapons videos. He collects French rifles, has a ton of them. So the 4956 is the final iteration of the Moss 49 which was an improvement of the Moss 44, which was an improvement of the Moss 40. So you can kind of see how that went. Really, the receivers here didn't change much really at all. So if you kind of just ignore this part of the rifle, the receiver here was almost the same for uh, the Moss 40, 44, 49, and finally the 4956. So let's kind of go from the stock all the way up to the muzzle and kind of discuss everything really quick. We have just our basic, I don't know, basic rifle stock here. And there's your sling bar to hold the sling in place. These were issued with butt pads. And yes, this is actually issued with the gun. And what this is for is pretty much to absorb recoil of firing rifle grenades, which we will talk about here. This is a fake rubber grenade. This is not real. So this was to absorb recoil and also to lengthen the length of pull of the rifle because the stock is kind of short. You can't tell really from here. So working our way up, let's discuss the safety. So right now the rifle is on safe and this just blocks the blocks the trigger so it's obvious that the safety's on and it also does internally do something that stops the trigger from being pulled let's uh put the bolt forward so we are clear so now the trigger notice how it won't pull even if i mean your finger can get on it now it will so that's the safety i'm not talking about the rear sight here as you guys can see this is the rear sight i believe this is in meters so it goes two, three, four, five, six hundred meters, seven hundred meters, all the way up to twelve. And it's just a leaf here. And this is windage adjustable. So it's fully windage and elevation adjustable at the rear sight, which is really nice. 
taking a look at the other side of the receiver here, obviously we have the sling that goes all the way up. We do have a scope mount. So what France wanted to do with this rifle is kind of have kind of a do-it-all rifle. They wanted to have an infantry rifle, which is really this configuration here. They wanted it to be able to be outfitted with a marksman's scope. So this is kind of a marksman's rifle. And also, if we look up here, which we will get to momentarily, is the grenade launcher for the rifle. So definitely cool. There's that scope mount there. This can feed from stripper clips. Now we're getting up to the action in the magazine. So there's a stripper clip guide and just put your Moss or your French stripper clips in. It will feed or you can remove the magazine. This is a nylon charging handle here, which is very kind of cool and distinct looking. It's kind of it definitely stands out. And the action is direct impingement. So this is a true direct impingement rifle, unlike the AR-15, which is actually an internal gas piston. The There's a gas tube in here, very similar to an AR-15. And you pull the trigger, bullet goes that way. Once the bullet passes the gas tube, that gas tube is filled with gas. The gas comes back here and impinges on this hole. And then the action cycles, you know, ejects and extracts the cartridge, puts a new one in from the magazine, all that good stuff. So the magazine, so this is actually pretty cool. So the Moss 40, going back into the history here, the Moss 40 was a five round internal magazine rifle. So if you just take this out and imagine this is just a piece of metal here, this is pretty much what the Moss 40 looked like. And on the Moss 44, what France wanted to do is add a box magazine. So what they did is pretty clever. And I'm telling you this because this very distinct looking actual clip that's on the magazine. What they did was, is instead of redesigning the receiver to add a magazine release and all the other uh, dimensional changes that needed to be done, what they did is they just changed the magazine. So they removed the floor plate and made a external magazine and they just put the clip on the magazine. So they altered the magazine instead of the actual receiver. And all they needed to do is just make a little cut here so the magazine would actually go in. And that's why you have this kind of goofy looking clip. I think it's pretty cool. So that's the story on the 10 round magazine, direct impingement. Again, I did mention very, very quickly, let's talk about the kind of the, the bolts and everything. So let's disassemble this, pull down on this lever, forward on the rear sight. There's your top assembly, recoil spring. And this is your bolt carrier. I guess you could call it a bolt carrier. It carries the bolt. Just like this. Let's get the actual bolt out. Firing pin comes right out. We'll talk about this firing pin a little bit later. There's the bolt, and it is a tilting action. So nothing, it's not a rotating bolt like what we think of in an AR-15. Notice how the back here, it kind of tilts down. So it tilts. So right now the gun's in battery. It cycles, and then notice how it just tilts back. Go ahead and put this back together. Very simple to put together. As I say that, I probably won't be able to get it back together. Now this, this part is a little bit tricky. The recoil spring guide is in the top cover here. Let's get this out of the way. So just feed this here. This can be a little bit tricky. So you have to feed the recoil spring and then here, so you just push. I like to use my fingers to guide the recoil spring. Keep going, and then you'll feel the top cover drop like so. Push the button, and now it's back together, ready to rock. So there's the action. Moving our way up, just some basic hand guards, and you can see this has absolutely been refurbished. Actually, we should talk about markings too. So here are the markings on the Moss. Caliber 7.5, Moss 1949-56. Here's your serial number. Refurbish mark is right here. Working our way up to the handguard, just some basic handguards. And like I said earlier, this has clearly been refurbished because this is like brand new. You have a, uh, I guess a handguard clip that holds everything together. And now getting up here, this is where it gets a little funky looking. So this is actually the grenade launcher. There's a couple levers here. What this one does is this has to go up and this cuts the gas off. So when you launch the grenade, the gas won't feed up into the gas tube to cycle the action. I don't exactly know how this, uh, how to aim this, but we have a couple settings here. One is for direct fire 
and one is for indirect fire like this and you use I think you line this up with the tip of the grenade and then finally you have your distance this is so if you think about it if this is far forward like this there's not as much time for the the gas to build up in the rocket to go that way so the farther you go down here the farther the grenade is going to launch so that's something that's pretty cool this is a obviously a dummy inert 22 millimeter nato grenade and this is in hebrew which is kind of cool so that's the grenade launcher i might launch this for you today because i can and also we have the launching projectiles which are just like dummy they're not dummy, they're real, but they look like that. Instead of putting a real cartridge in, you just put this in and the grenade will launch. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna launch this fake inert training rifle grenade. So the first thing we need to do, I don't wanna launch this too far, so I'm just gonna set it to the, I don't know, 120, see what happens. Hopefully I don't launch this over the berm. So take the grenade, Put it over, make sure the gas cutoff is on. So to flip this up, I'm gonna get this out of the way, load the rifle, put this in the magazine. And then I think you just pull the trigger. Simple. Now, finally, getting up to the muzzle, we have a, I guess a radial muzzle brake, which a lot of people see today on like AR-10s, AR-15s. And this, the French were doing this before it was cool, I guess. So that definitely looks like something that we know today. This, uh, I don't, I think the guns were issued with these. These aren't too hard to find. This is a actual night sight for the Moss and the photoluminescent paint or whatever it was in here is long dead. But just to kind of see what that looks like, this goes over, line it up straight and then tighten it up. And now you have sights that you can actually see at night. And again, this you can't do it now because that paint is obviously long gone. But something cool, that little addition to the rifle. And finally, we have the bayonet, which I'm not a big, not a big bayonet guy myself. But there it is. And the sheath is, comes out, maybe. There you go. And there's a little button here, and I'll show you. This is how to get the bayonet off. But just put the bayonet on, just line it up over the muzzle brake. Maybe it's hard to do this looking through the phone. Just like that. And there's the moss with the bayonet. And really all this does is you can see that little stud that pops out that attaches or it locks on to the end of the muzzle brake. So to get it off, just push it, slide it right off. And there you go. So another thing I'd like to discuss is if you look online or watch any videos, a major safety problem that occurs with the 4956 is the double fire or the slam fire that happens with these rifles. It is true. It's not hard to see. If you go onto YouTube and just watch some videos of people shooting, you will definitely see it. So why that happens is this uh, firing pin is made of steel. It's very big and very beefy, and it's actually free floating in, in, the, uh, in the bolt. So there's no spring holding it in place, kind of like an AR-15 or like an SKS if you're familiar with that. So what happens is... Uh, to actually take a step back, French military primers are notoriously hard and pretty much with the correct primers that the gun was designed for, this is not an issue because the primers are hard and all that inertia when the bolt goes forward to close, it's not going to, it's not going to hit the primer hard enough to ignite the cartridge. So the issue lies when you shoot commercial ammo because commercial ammo has a much, much softer primers. Than military ammo when it comes to the French stuff. So what happens is, is with those softer commercial primers, when you pull the trigger, the bolt goes back and it comes forward. And this is so heavy that the inertia is still going forward because it is free floating. So there's nothing holding it back. So the bolt, I can kind of do it this way. Bolt goes back, comes forward. And when it slams, 
that firing pin comes up and hits. And what that does is on the softer primers, it sets it off. So it's not uncommon for these to slam fire. And again, that's a major safety issue. There are a couple companies that make a titanium firing pin and all that does is it reduces the weight. So when that, you know, it's going forward, there's not enough inertia there or momentum to ignite the primer or a couple companies make a spring loaded firing pin. Now what I did, I did neither of these things, but I did fix it. So what I did is I got some really, really gritty sandpaper and all I did was I just sanded the front of the firing pin and I literally shortened it. So what that's going to do is when, when using commercial ammo, the firing pin still is going forward with that momentum, but it's not long enough to, to dimple the primer enough to ignite it. And I've never had a slam fire with this. It's kind of a, uh, you know, an impromptu way to fix it. And I've have not tried military ammo with this, this firing pin either. So uh, I might be SOL and the, the military stuff might not work, but I look at it like this. Me being in the USA, uh, the surplus French stuff is going to dry up eventually, and hopefully the 7.5 French that Privy makes won't. So I will definitely shoot more commercial ammo through this than military. So all I did is I sat for a while. It took me a while and just kind of ground, like ground off the firing pin, and I just shortened it is what I did, and it's worked fine. So that's that quick slam fire issue. All right, so wrapping up the range day here with the Moss 4956. This is definitely a very cool rifle that's not totally super uncommon in the United States. Uh, if you find one of these, check it out and pick it up if you can. They're definitely a cool rifle to add to the collection. Uh, I really like the rifle. The direct impingement is very cool. And at a time when like G3 and FAL and M14 were, you got to think of this gun as that era too. So those are all direct, Im or excuse me, uh, gas piston, where this is still uh, that direct impingement. If you guys have one of these or if you've ever messed with them, please leave your experiences in the comments. Let me know what you think of this rifle. Uh, thank you, thanks again for watching. This is Connor with Guns and Stuff. We'll see you in the next video.